Silkworm family, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Danny. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell because I am posting lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of new content lately. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, please be sure to do that. It is at the underscore dancing underscore bookworm and I post on there full book reviews and content. Boom. <laughs> if you guys have been following along with my high school book club, you know that we are reading Far From the Tree by Robin Benway, and this is our final discussion. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead, click the link up above or down below in the description box, and that will take you back to the playlist where the first video announcing the readathon is, um, or the reading club is. Um, if you guys want to do that, I will not take down the videos or the Google Docs so you guys can still participate in it. It just won't be at the same pace that we were all going but you guys can do it at your own pace anytime you want. So if you guys have read this book now we have finished it. Um, basically all the happy feels at the end. So the three siblings Grace, Maya, and Joaquin meet in the beginning after Grace gives up her baby for adoption. Um, she is interested in knowing her biological family. They meet. Um, Maya's family is on the brink of a divorce at the beginning. They do end up getting divorced. Her mom also has a drinking problem and she ends up passing out, getting injured, and going to rehab. Um, her father comes home to stay with them during that time but Maya is still feeling very outcasted in her adoptive family. Family, so she's leaning a lot onto her biological siblings for support. Grace is pretty much bullied out of school after having a baby and she ends up staying home for the rest of the year doing her work online and she ends up meeting R Rafe. Um, again, I had a friend in high school who spelled it the same way and his name was Rafi. Um, so sorry if I pronounce it wrong sometimes but it is pronounced Rafe according to the audiobook um, and they end up starting kind of like a friendship with like semi crushes feelings um but they, she doesn't want to do anything with it because she's still overcoming everything that happened in her previous relationship and Joaquin is living with a foster family he has been in foster care his whole life he's living with Mark and Linda who want to adopt him he originally says no but towards the end of the book we find out that yes he does get adopted by Mark and Linda um, they do end up meeting their birth mother that we found out it's so far now that we have finished the book we know that they have met their birth mother um well they went to meet her birth mother and they actually met their birth aunt. <laughs> their birth aunt? Their biological aunt. Um, their birth mother passed away in an accident and is no longer alive, but their aunt fills in the questions that they were missing. She also gives Joaquin a key to a safe deposit box that helps him um, find pictures of him when he was a baby from that his mom kept um, all those years. So... Whew, that was probably a really bad description, but this is a very long book. Um, it was, how many pages? 374 pages, um, which I guess isn't too terribly long, but it felt long. Um, mainly because I listened to it on audiobook, so I had it on play while I was doing other stuff, so just kind of like seeing the hours of how long I read the audiobook for made it seem long, but... Overall, the book is actually a fairly quick read. Um, the word of the week is authentic. So I actually got this from the reviews about the book because there is no word in the end of the book that I really felt stood out. But authentic was part of the reviews. It says it was an authentic book. Authentic means genuine and real. The example is she was being her most authentic self when she came clean and told the people surrounding her that she wasn't rich or famous. And what is something or someone you know to be authentic? Um, when I think of authentic, I probably think of like, I don't even know, like probably like authentic jewelry. Like, um, if you have authentic jewelry, you could probably like pawn it or sell it for money kind of thing. Um, people, I don't really know anyone who's like 100% authentic because it's like really hard to be honest all the time. I'm sure there are people out there who are honest 100% of the time, but, you know, I think that being authentic um, in moments is a lot easier than being an authentic person altogether. Uh, so we're going to jump into the question, or the section three questions. So number one is, Joaquin had an adoptive family at one point. What was their last name? So this was the big thing that was revealed about Joaquin um, and his past and why he didn't want to be adopted. Um, but he had an adoptive family named the Buchanans, um, and they had adopted him, and he was part of their lives. He says he didn't, like, fully love them as family, but it was better than being tossed around from foster care to foster care. And he also didn't feel like they ever treated him like a biological 
child. He was kind of just like an extra mouth to feed, but they wanted to take care of him full time and not be foster parents anymore. So they loved him enough to want him in their lives, but not enough to be like, oh, you're 100% our son. Uh, question two is what did Joaquin do when when he was 12 to his adoptive sister and what did his adoptive father do? So this goes back to the Buchanans again and what happened when he was 12 that makes him regret everything in his past. Um, so when he was 12 he had really bad anger and emotional issues, um, a lot of like PTSD and a lot of like just mental health struggles. Um, so he ends up having like a raging fit and he accidentally throws a, stipper, uh, or a stapler at his baby sister who's like the biological daughter of the Buchanans, Natalie, and he hits her in the head and it gives her like a concussion, I think it says, like it gave her a concussion. Um, and his adoptive father turns around and breaks his arm. So he instantly is put back into foster care. It doesn't really say if it's because his father broke his arm or because they gave him up. Um, it doesn't really like fully go into like, did the father get in trouble for breaking his arm or was it kind of just like a, oh, you don't tell anyone kind of thing. Um, but he does end up going back into the foster system. And, um, um, he ends up, he's in a hospital too for a while, in like a mental, mental health hospital as well for a little while before he's put back into the foster system, which is why he meets with his therapist at a diner because he's so scared of like that clinical feeling that the hospital felt like to him. Um, number three is what did Mark and Linda buy Joaquin? They bought him a new car, um, which Joaquin felt kind of weird about accepting because they're not his parents' parents, they're just his foster parents is kind of his outlook on it, and he felt a little uncomfortable accepting such a large gift. Uh, number four is what does Maya have to help what does Maya have to help them find their birth mom? So what does Maya have in her possession that will help them to find their birth mom? And she has an envelope that was addressed to her family from when she was a baby that was from her birth mom. So it has the return address on it. So they go to that address. Um, who answers the door when they go to meet their birth mom? They meet their aunt. Um, and the next question is what happened to their birth mom? Their birth mom passed away in an accident. Um, so their aunt kind of stays there to fill in some questions about what happened to their mom and why they gave her up for adoption. It turns out that they had, her mom had Joaquin really young, but she loved him a lot. So she kept him. Um, however, his father was deported, um, because he was from a different country illegally and he was deported back to that country. So Joaquin, um, kind of like ha got kind of like the bad end of the stick there. Like his mom tried to take care of him and stuff, but she just couldn't. She then got pregnant with Grace through a guy who was horrible to her and not good to Joaquin. And social services got involved once they started seeing some things that weren't going well in the family. And they took Grace away and put her up for adoption right after she was born. And Joaquin was also sent to foster care. Um, and then she got pregnant later on. The mom also got pregnant later on from another guy who wasn't great. And she instantly gave my up for adoption because she knew it was the right thing to do at that point. Number five is, or number seven, sorry. Number seven is what did their birth mom always remember about them? She always remembered their birthdays. So the day that they were born, she would kind of like have like a more grieving morning day where she um, would be remembering her kids, the aunt says. Number seven, what did their birth, or number eight, sorry, I'm really bad at knowing what number I'm on. <laughs> number eight, what, what was in Joaquin's safe deposit box? Joaquin had pictures of him as a baby. That was something that he always wanted that he never had. Um, no foster family really took pictures of him ever. Um, a lot of the times in foster care, you're also not allowed to take pictures of the kids that other people will see. So in these modern days of social media, I think people just avoid, um, taking pictures of kids, but, um, yeah, so he had pictures of him finally. For the first time in his life, he had pictures of him. Grace had pictures of her as a baby, um, like a really bitty, bitty baby. I think she was actually, like, not even born. She was, like, a pregnant bump in her mom's belly. Um, but yeah, there was pictures of them. Uh, and number nine was what does Grace do at the end of the book? She ends up going to meet her daughter. She goes and meets Millie or Peach, as she's been calling her throughout the book. Um, and kind of her first visit face to face with her own baby. So number 10 is look through your old baby photos and which one stands out to you and why. So I picked this one of little Danny eating cake. Um, this, this photo, when I think of like my babyhood or my childhood, this photo pops into my head. 
I don't know if it's just because it was like the first time that I enjoyed cake. I don't know. But I just always think of this little tiny chubby baby eating cake. Um, yeah, I was a preemie when I was born. So I was like teeny, teeny, tiny. Everybody tells me like I could fit in the palm of my dad's hand um, when I was born. So I look at this picture and I see that chubby little face and those chubby little arms. And then now I get skinny again. Nope, I've been chubby my whole life. But um, just eating cake, being so happy at her birthday party. I don't know why that one pops in my head. It's just like when I think of my baby pictures, it's that one. So our discussion is every family is a bit dysfunctional. What is something dysfunctional about your family? Discuss it with them and why you consider it a dysfunction. Also, think of something you love about your family. Why is that your favorite thing? Even even the most dysfunctional homes have something to love about them. Tell your family what you love about them and find a way to do it in a way that will mean the most to them. So my family is not like a talk it out, touchy feely type family. So I think I show them that I love them every day by like watching and taking care of my nieces and nephew. I check in with my mom every day to make sure like her health is good, she is doing good, stuff like that. I think like the little things I do around the house are my ways of showing my love. Um, but also I think my family is dysfunctional in the fact that we have seven people in one roof and some Sometimes there's just too many people in one room and it gets chaotic and it gets crazy. Um, but that's when I go up the stairs and I just hide for a little bit. It's not a horrible dysfunction. Um, also, I think like losing my dad and stuff too, like that makes us a little dysfunctional because there's that missing person in our lives that he was there for such a long time and now he's not. It's really sad um, that sometimes we'll be doing stuff and I'll be going to like, tell my dad and he's not there. So, you know, I think that makes dysfunction a thing too. But overall, I think the way that I show them, I love my family because even though there's seven of us in one roof and it's kind of crazy sometimes, I think that my family is just funny and sarcastic. And the things that, I don't know, we get ourselves into some situations, man. I don't even know. Today, my brother threw a ball and it hit my mom in the face. So, <laughs> um, it wasn't on purpose, but yeah, there's like a whole video on Facebook now. Um, also, I think like we do like a lot of fun stuff together. We're just we're a fun family. We're a cool, fun family. But yeah, so that is it for the end of Far From the Tree. Um, I think that this had such an amazing arc in it that went from loneliness and sadness to this happy, joyful bonding togetherness. And I think it was just, this book just is a five star for me. It touches my heart every time I read it. And it's just so good. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you enjoyed doing this book club, then be looking out for another one that is to come over the summer will be the next time that I come up with one. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Bye. Wasn't that a great video? Clearly books make me very happy. Now you can make me happy too. Click the subscribe button to follow my channel. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you think I did good. And the notification bell will let you know when I post new content. Also, follow my Instagram for more book shenanigans.